What's up everyone, this is Ryuka here, and today what I want to talk about is the Mortal Kombat X comic that was published by DC Comics, and yeah, pretty much my overview dash review of the, what I'm calling season one of this uh, comic. So uh, yeah, start this. So, being that this is season one of the Mortal Kombat X comic, um, which I believe this is season one because I know they're going to um, do a continuous. Before I continue on forward talking about this comic, um, I will be spoiling some things within the comic and things that I've that interest me anyway that occurred during this run of um, Mortal Kombat X. First off, this takes place before um, Mortal Kombat X, but going into Mortal Kombat X. The interesting part about this though is that it released it with season one. Anyway, um, this does not end going into Mortal Kombat X the way I, I thought it was going to end going into it, but uh, it didn't. There was a cliffhanger ending, and that to me was a bit disappointing in some sense. But um, overall, the comic has been it will it was an interesting read, or is an interesting read. Um, Basically, the first issue kind of already has its first kill, and that is uh, Who's Hal, if, if I pronounce that character's name right. Um, Scorpion basically punches a hole through the guy's head. And um, that just sort of explains how Kano, in a sense, has the laser cannon, whatever, in his chest now, and not Who's Hal himself. But besides certain characters dying, there was also a lot of plot twists and a lot, and a lot of things just bridging off and um, somewhat making sense. But I felt like this was more about the Kamidogus than anything else. And spoilers ahead, um, but for those who have not read the comic anyway. But uh, if you are curious, there's also people reading out the digital issues, which are no different than the physical. I prefer the physical because... Um, I just like having them in my hand and reading them, but there's also the digital, and um, that's more convenient for me. Anyway, it's convenient if you're on the, you know, if you're on the go and you want to read something, it's there. But um, yeah, basically, this all takes place for Mortal Kombat X, and uh, it just the way it ends, it just doesn't, it doesn't go right into Mortal Kombat X. It only explains certain things how certain characters obtain certain things and whatnot where this is well at least season one was mainly about the kami dogus from what i've seen so far it's just been kami dogu this kami dogu that and then it goes into the whole blood gods or blood god anyway and that Raiko is the blood god in this um comic and um well he obtains the power and then loses complete control of it which is interesting and to me, I don't think Raikou's dead. And that's mainly because um, though he loses control of the power, it doesn't necessarily show him die. Yeah, he's falling apart into Kane and whatnot. But then yet again, yet again he could reassemble if, if, or regenerate, if that makes any sense. I believe that uh, Raikou will return. I don't think he's dead um, at all. And then there's also Scarlet. She makes an appearance and him. Most of the characters that got redesigned anyway in this comic eventually wound up being in the game. Um, as you can see, certain characters' costumes were redesigned and they wound up in the game, apparently. So I wouldn't be surprised if Scarlet or Raiko at some point make an appearance in the game. If not now, maybe in the sequel or maybe in DLC. Who knows? But anyways, going back to this. There's just a lot of things that were going on. So it goes from Kamidogus to the whole thing with um, the Blood Gods. And it also explains how certain characters were relevant in um, Mortal Kombat X. That also is revealed 
as well in here. So in case you were wondering like, oh, what the hell happened? Why were certain characters relevant? Well, relevant or relevant, however you want to call it. Um, the comic also explains that and fills that in as well. I felt though that this did not, and it's weird because the way it ended, even though it showed Dramen and Havoc apparently is dead, which in Mortal Kombat, it seems like no one's never really dead. But um, I just don't think that, I mean, to me, I felt like this did not end going into the game. Um, this was more like a uh, kind of explaining what was happening. And in season two, I'm hoping that um, when they, if DC decides to continue this <laughs> comic more further, which I'm hoping that they do, um, what I'm expecting to see is um, them kind of bridge off, which they're going to clearly bridge off what they left off here, and um, go into Mortal Kombat X, and then after that, just explain what happened after Mortal Kombat X going into the next Mortal Kombat game. So I'm hoping in Season 2 they kind of do two things in one. Go into Mortal Kombat X, then skip that, and then go into like kind of a taste of what we could expect to see in uh, the next Mortal Kombat game. But that might be asking for too much too soon. And even the writers have limits to what they can do with this comic. But hopefully they really don't. They just keep kind of expanding on the lore in um, the Mortal Kombat universe. The comic um, has been good so far. I mean, at least with the story. The story is, is great, but uh, just too many loopholes. And sometimes it feels like it's just dragging on. Overall, though, it's been pretty much a good comic. It's a good read. Um, it's not bad. It's not good to me. It's, it's about in the middle. Uh, it's a good read. I do like the art. I mean, clearly the vent recovers were the first issue where there was about four only got um three of them the f being that the first one was uh the logo that one i couldn't even find but uh yeah the covers were great the art is great i do like the art in here um the story to me anyway is fairly decent uh just the, the cliffhanger just is just like what the hell it was almost predictable towards the end of issue 11 going into issue 12 that there was just going to be some sort of cliffhanger to pull people in for season two and i'm hoping dc decides to continue this and uh, do a season two as well as another room giving um the writers and the artists and whatnot the green light to continue this which i wouldn't be surprised if they do because i mean this this is not a bad comic it's not a bad story as well um it's fairly decent at least to me anyway um but I'm just curious to see what, what they are going to do in Season 2 besides finishing off what they left off in Issue 12 and then um, hopefully going into Mortal Kombat 11, maybe even a little bit more. Um, so who knows? I mean, they could go in that direction or they could just go in a whole other direction and basically do a side story on uh, other characters that didn't make appearance in the game and explain what they've been doing. Which will make sense as well if they decide to do that. Like Tanya or Rain or other characters that were cameos in the game. It kind of makes season two based around them and what they were up to and other characters that didn't make an appearance as well. But another thing I noticed in this comic um, is also the fact that um, they were killing off characters and that's something people wanted to see more of. Um, and the thing is, I mean, I think they only could kill off so many characters because then before you know it, there's no more characters to kill. <laughs> so it was interesting to see how they killed off. Uh, who's how I didn't really care for. It was just like, eh. But when I saw Mervado got killed off, I was like, oh, shit. Like, that was, it was, I sort of seen it coming, but at the same time, I was like, what the hell? I, I felt like the character could have had an interesting role in the game. But yet again, not a lot of people like the Movado from my understanding, but each to their own. So it'll be interesting to see what other characters they kill off in season two, because the surprising one to me anyway, in this um, season one anyway, was Kataro. I did not see him getting killed off, but apparently that happened. So Shokin were dying left and right, but uh, Goro's still alive. 
So I, I just there was just so much twists and turns in this uh in this comic. Overall, as I said, this is a good read. If you haven't checked it out, I recommend checking out whatever it's if you can find physical copies, which I think is gonna be a little bit tricky to find each and every one physical unless you kept up to date like myself with it. Um but uh you can also find all these digitally for a you know, fair price. So yeah, it's a, it's a good read. If you haven't checked out, I recommend checking out the Mortal Kombat X comic. If you're into the lore of Mortal Kombat and wanting to know what happened before X. But um, if you're new to Mortal Kombat, I say uh, do a little bit of research into the story before reading this because you're probably going to be sort of confused to what the hell is uh, going on here anyway. So this is the end of my video. Um, overall, I say this is a good read. Check it out. Uh, so this was my overview dash review. Uh, I will put a score on this, but it's not. It's not like to me. It's not like reviewing a game. So like my way of scoring it will be like it's a good read, basically meaning you should check it out. <laughs> and if it was a bad read, I'll just say it was a bad read. And at least to me, I, I wouldn't recommend checking out. But I'm saying check this out if you haven't. Red Story from Mortal Kombat X, I say check it out, but if you want to know more about the lore and whatnot, I say do some research before you get into this, because then you might be a bit confused to what's going on um, in the Mortal Kombat story or lore or whatever. Anyways, um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, hit that like button um, if you'd like to see more of this content in the future, of course. And as always, this is Ray Yuka here saying, sign off.